Okay, in this video we're going to talk about how to simulate the discrete logistic growth model and I'm looking here at the Math 195 discussion board instructions and that's going to be a guide for what I do in this video. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a MATLAB script. I've pulled up MATLAB over here on the right side of the screen. Notice that we are not in the Math 195 folder so let's navigate there. You can click on desktop and then navigate to your folder or you can use command lines like CD for change directory. Now we want to create a new script. On the first line of your script I request that everybody puts their first name, middle initial, and last name. So I'm going to pretend that I am Christina Iona Zierga for the purposes of this lab. So my first line of the script is going to be my first name, middle initial, last name, underscore d2.m. Let's save and I'm going to save my file with my first name, middle initial, last name, d2. And I'm going to make sure that I'm saving that in my Math 195 MATLAB folder. And that's really good. I see it coming up on the left-hand side of the screen. If I were to go DIR to list the, the directory of this working folder, I would see that my M file is there. So that's going to be great. Leave a blank line in the comments section. And now let's describe what this script is going to do. Let's also state what the model looks like. So x parentheses n equals x parentheses n n minus 1 plus r times x parentheses n minus 1 times parentheses 1 minus x parentheses n minus 1 divided by capital K close parentheses. Let's describe some of the parameters and initial conditions that we will use for this model. Now let's go over to the discussion instructions. Um, your initial condition is going to depend on your letter of your first name. So since I'm Christina, begin my model with 100 individuals in the population. Next, we're going to need K value. Now, middle name begins with I, K equals 250. Lastly, we'll need to know what R is. R is this growth rate, and it says if your last name begins with letters Q through Z, we're going to set R equal to 2.7. And it's good to some things that we'll need here. First of all, we need to define what K is and R is. Now we've stated that up in the comment section, but this is not executable code. So we need to put that where MATLAB will execute it. And again, I'm going to make a note that that is the carrying capacity, and we're going to define R and I'm going to put semicolons at the end of those lines to suppress the output. The other thing we'll need here is we'll need a data structure to hold all the population values. Now X is going to be an array and how big should we make this array? Well let's go back over to our instructions. We want to run this model for T equals 80 time steps. So let's let A B an array and I'm going to fill it all with zeros. It's going to be one row and it's going to have the number of columns equal to T. Now I could have hard coded that in and, and called it 80 but in general it's better to let that be the variable T. That way if you want to change the number of time steps in the future you can just change the code in one place. You don't have to go through several lines of code and keep changing that 80 to some other number. Let's actually run the simulation. We'll need an initial condition x of 1 equals our initial condition is 100. I'm going to label this initial condition. Next we'll need a for loop to fill in the remaining values for x sub 2, x sub 3, all the way up through x sub 80. So we'll let n go from 2 because that's the next one we need to fill in up through t. x sub n equals well, we already have our model typed in up here, so let's just copy paste and I'm going to suppress the output and let's make sure that our code runs and then we'll start to take a look at the output and how we would graph that. So I'm going to save the code. To run the code, I'm going to type in the name of the file. Got no error messages. Everything seems to be fine. You could take a look at, you know, what's the 80th value of X. We have a number in there. It looks reasonable. 
So now let's talk about how to plot or visualize the data. Over here in the instructions, what did we want to do? Plot the time series x versus t include axis labels. We're going to do a plot and we're going to plot the values for time on the horizontal axis, that's 1 up through t. We're going to plot x on the vertical axis and I'm going to specify a line type. It's going to be a solid line and I'll make it blue. Okay, that looks great. Now we do need to include some axes labels. Let's add our x label and I'm going to call this time steps and for the y label population size. I'm going to save the code. I'm going to clear my screen. It got a little cluttered. I'm going to clear all variables. Notice that that cleared my workspace. Now let's run the code again. So now I get a figure. Uh, my data is plotted. That looks great. And we've got the time steps and the population size listed here. 